This next section is created to discuss the recording techniques we used for The Hiding Place. Terry Christian, a Grammy-nominated engineer and colleague of mine, engineered our session, which took place at the Sound Kitchen in Nashville, Tennessee. In this segment, I'll discuss recording techniques that Terry and I have used for many years with the scores we've collaborated on. I'll talk about positioning musicians within the recording space, microphone selections, and other points of interest. I had been recording in Nashville's Ocean Way Studios for a number of years, but was bumped there a few weeks before the date, so the studio manager booked the sound kitchen for me. Even though it's a smaller room, I think the recording is the best out of all my scores, and that's a real testimony to Terry and his incredible abilities. You can see from this diagram of Terry's how we placed everyone in the main room. One unique decision we made years ago was to put the first and second violins in straight lines of five players across. We all felt they would play more confidently when they see the other violinists in their section preparing their bows for an entrance. We're recording so much music in these sessions and working so fast all the time, so any technique you can develop to help the musicians play better, faster, is a real advantage. We also place the four celli in a line to create the same type of confidence in them. Each cello has an audio technic of 4050 or 4060 on it, but Terry submixed them all into a stereo pair. It's an incredible sound. Due to the tremendous amount of low string writing I was doing, we added a fourth cello to the session. So much of the score has the celli divided, so two on a part was preferred. Because it was a total of only 18 strings on the date, we always doubled the strings after the master pass, and sometimes tripled them. As a result, there's a great lower register of the strings. The truth is, though, that most of the sound of this score are the Neumann M49 set in Omni mode. That, along with the ceiling microphones, really provided the majority of our sound. The string section spot mics were then used to add clarity into the mix. Another point of interest is the use of the sound field microphone to capture the woodwind section. The microphone is able to catch all the woodwinds in their semicircle, and as a result, we're primarily able to use this microphone for the woodwinds in the mix. We can then dig up solo lines through the spot mics when needed. Early on in my scores, I felt like we were relying too much on spot mics, and that's not the right way to get a woodwind sound. The sound of an instrument is one with air and distance between you and the instrument. Those spot mics didn't have any distance, and it really bothered me. The addition of the Soundfield microphone solved that problem immediately. This would also be the first score where my brother Adam wasn't able to be a part of the project. Adam always served as a co-engineer to Terry on the sessions, but also my ears inside the control room in case I missed anything during a take. My future wife, Summerly, who's also a wonderful oboe player, did all the copy work on the score. She sat in the control room with Terry and did an incredible job as my second set of ears. Nothing gets by her, and that's probably also a large reason why this score sounds so good. I think it also created a really relaxed environment inside the control room. Between Terry and Summerlee's personality, the day was guaranteed to be mellow but under control. And this, of course, is a welcome change from my intense demeanor. This would also be the first time that my parents would attend any type of recording session I was involved in. Even though I didn't see them much during the sessions, I knew it was a very special day for them. Terry mixed the score in Grammy award-winning producer Michael O'Mardian's private studio called The Sound House. We set up there for about a week, and Michael would pop down from time to time and chat about music. It was an incredible experience for me to be around a rock producer that I grew up listening to. It took about a full day for Terry to arrive at the final balance of our mix, but once he found that, the music basically mixed itself. As you look at Terry's input and output documentation, you get a feel for how many microphones Terry had to work with to get the blend you're hearing in the score. Now anyone that's worked with me knows how much I hate final mixes. It is so stressful for me. That's because it's the last time you're here to properly archive the music. You're never going back to it. Terry provided the most stress-free mix environment I'd ever been a part of. We actually recently worked together on another project I'm writing, and the mix experience was the same. The Hiding Place is one score of mine that I never tire of hearing, and that has so much to do with the recording of the score and the people playing their instruments. While it's my job to write and orchestrate the best I can, the whole team has to be performing at the top of their game. That's one thing I've learned from Terry and a few other talented engineers that I've worked with over the years. 
That quote, magic sound, that all composers are looking for, comes from a great engineer in a great room, using great microphones through a great console, recording great musicians. And I think that's exactly what we got on the score to The Hiding Place. Thank you.